So I've been in Montpellier, south of France, four times now. Flew down from Paris, went um, west up to Carcassonne and Montségur and places like that. Came back, tried to get a plane back to Australia. Had the positive COVID test, had to abandon that, that idea. And so I went um, east uh, down towards Khan and uh, Saint-Tropez. Now I'm back here again tomorrow. I fly to Paris and the rules from for crossing borders are just boring. Because one has been double vaxxed and I was double vaxxed back in September last year, that's the second vax. So the first vax must have been a couple of months before that. Because I could see that the petty bureaucrats had just no way of dealing with pretending that they were doing something without making it compulsory. I'm against compulsory vax. I'm not against vax. I'm against it being compulsory. And had I had the choice, I wouldn't have been vaxed. But there's no way I could travel the world. And so I did my own research on all the best data. And it seemed to me at my age, which was 67, rising 68, uh, almost no risk. So I went ahead and did it so that I could travel. Now, these are my documents in order to get from France to the UK. And I've narrowed it down to three. Lots of others that I've had to fill in over time, like... Uh, statements of honour to France, uh, which was never asked for. Anyway, so this is my Australian document. This is my primary document. And it is a QR code. I've got all these on my phone, but I'm concerned because I'm crossing international borders tomorrow from France to UK. If my phone crashes or something, I've had... Uh, a very kind receptionist at the hotel I'm staying at here in Montpellier print this out. So that's my primary document. It's a French government, uh, sorry, the Australian government certificate. Now, the next one is this French uh, government certificate. It's a, uh, what the French call the Pass Sanitaire. But in order to get that, I had to go into a pharmacist, and I did that in St. Malo, or... I don't know, a month or so, it seems like ages ago, and produce the Australian certificate and have a pharmacist certify that the, uh, the vaccinations that I'd had in Australia were sufficient to get me the past sanitaire. And then, so that's then what I've been using. It's on my phone. Everywhere I go, every restaurant, every train, every aeroplane, you have to have that scan Otherwise, you just don't get past getting a takeaway. Then, to get into Britain, uh, you've got this is a multiple page document and it takes you a while to fill it in. And there are all sorts of preconditions uh, that you have to have before you can fill it in. Eventually, <laughs> eventually you get it, another QR code which will be asked for by Air France because I'm on the red, not on the red list, but uh, they want to know the ins and outs of everything. Where you're from, where you're going, how long you've been there, where, blah, 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 blah. and like one, two. Uh, to be fair, this is the next stage because I've, I've, I've had to... I've had to uh, order a, uh, a COVID test in the UK when I get there and I have to isolate until I get the negative test back. And then you have to get that order number and put it on the United Kingdom Foreign Ministers. I've got my pages all mixed up now. Nope, that's the Australian one. That's the French one. That's a multiple page British one, and I'm pretty ready to fly 
tomorrow. But I tell you what, if you didn't have a computer, um, it wouldn't be that easy. Well, I can now add to last night's video. After not being able to check in electronically, either on the Air France app or directly on the computer, um, they did everything and then said, oh, you can't check in until we've checked your paperwork. So I've started to worry that maybe the positive COVID test, which I did at this airport last time, and it came back positive the next day as I was, as I was well, I had checked in and I was about to board and I was just killing time checking my emails and I had that positive one come through. I'm still a bit shocked that the system is so poor that it hasn't married that up and made me get a formal uh, negative test. I've done myself two uh, negative tests a few days ago, so I'm perfectly happy to pass one and I've done all the paperwork for when I land in the UK. Anyway, <coughs> rather than go for a run this morning, I was a bit worried. So I've come down and I'm standing in the line there and the check-in counter at Air France, she was apologising uh, to me that she didn't really know what she was doing and she was going through the paperwork bit by bit and checking it and I had everything there ready. I had my Australian passport, all the ones I did showed last night. I had an Australian uh, vaccination certificate, the British won the test and everything. And anyway, I booked through and it's now quarter to 11 and I'm not AM and I'm not boarding until like 2.20 or something like that. But uh, I can sit here and do the things I normally sit and do before I start the day. Like I haven't read the papers yet and I still can't believe what they've done to Djokovic. And I can't believe Chris Smith's saying on Twitter that he agrees with the decision for things not presented to the court. So he's happy that decisions are made on reasons that he doesn't know anything about. Well, I'm bloody not.